This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Mill here. I'm at the gym of Mr. Don, Don Charles. How are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, and yourself? All good, all good. Uh, lovely day here in uh, North London. It's, it's Mill Hill, to be precise. Mill Hill. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously over the last sort of couple of weeks, we've had this whole uh, Frank Bullioni, uh Anthony Yard, Jose Burton, Callum Johnson situation, which is uh, quite interesting, obviously, for the neutral boxing fan. Um, everyone's kind of had their say, including, obviously, Eddie Hearn and Frank and Anthony. Uh, but we've not really heard from yourself or Frank Bullioni on the situation. So, yeah, just give us a little insight into what's on your mind at the moment regarding this. Well, you know, it's quite um, surprising, really, because, uh, you know... It's on numerous occasions I've been asked about Anthony Yardi in the past, and uh, I, I don't. A lot of people probably don't know this. I'm, I was very instrumental in actually Anthony getting his deal with Frank Warren. Yeah, I confirmed to Frank that would probably be the best signing he'd done in the last twenty years when he was about to sign Anthony, um, and also I, I worked his his first fight in Wembley Arena. I did his first fight with Tunde, obviously. Tunde invited me to assist him to the corner. And um, he's, he's, a, he's a, a potential world beater, the, the young man. He's very, very exceptionally talented and uh, one to watch out for. And I believe, in my opinion, he will go all the way. Okay? Um, and when you're kind of involved with somebody in the same, me and Tunde go back a long way, the trainer. We go back a long way. And I've been asked on numerous occasions, will you ever fight would you be in a, he's in the same weight category as uh, Frank I said no that fight will not happen if I'm involved in the sense that why would I be a part of obstructing something that I helped to take off the ground yeah why would it doesn't make sense yeah for personal reasons I didn't want them to clash should it come to a point where uh, there's big things at stake then perhaps we would have to consider it in the future um, so to my surprise I think uh, all the talk at the moment is for uh, Anthony Yardi fighting Frambuglione, which, in my opinion, again, is too premature for Anthony. Okay, my guy's tested and proven Frambuglione. Frambuglione is an exceptional fighter. Um, is a current British champion. He has defended it successfully once. Um, to my surprise, uh, Anthony Yardi's advisors are trying to direct him towards uh, meeting Frank. In my opinion, I think it's too premature. I don't know what the rush is with this kid to uh, to, to to come and challenge uh, uh, my guy Frank. They obviously see Frank as an easy picking. They probably think we can beat this guy. Look, that's their opinion. They're entitled to it. I happen to disagree. Um, he will. He cannot. He cannot. Based on what he's done so far, which again, I don't believe he's beat anybody that warrants him to actually be able to contest for the British title and, and I believe the board have recently said he should fight an, fight an eliminator it is Jose Burton yeah. um, who was a former former British champion he won that belt okay he lost it against us yes he did but Jose Burton let me tell you something he's one awkward customer yeah that fight I dare them I dare Anthony Yardi and Tundi to take that fight it's a dare. I dare them to take it. Yeah, trust me, he's a very awkward guy. He's six foot five at the weight. Very, very awkward. Anthony has to bypass the t telescopic one twos in able to get success against Jose Burton. I dare them to take that fight. Should they win that fight, and should we beat Callum Johnson? Because I, I believe that's who we're mandated to uh, to to defend our title, Frank, to defend his titles. Should they be successful and we're successful against uh, Callum Johnson, then yeah, he then warrants mm -hmm. to be in the position that they want to bypass to, to be at. I don't think that's fair to anybody in the sense that anybody who's ever contested, unless you've been nominated or, or volunt voluntary defence where you volunteer to defend your title against a certain individual, that's not the case here. So you have to qualify for it. Let, let's talk about, obviously, Frank Warren's argument the other day that um, we know the board have ordered these two fights between 
Bullioni and, and um, Johnson and also Yard and um, Jose Burton. Frank's argument at the press conference the other day is that, um, and Anthony Yard, is that they don't want to wait another sort of eight, nine months before that situation come where the winners of them fights will face each other. Mm-hmm. So why not mm-hmm. just put the two best, in Frank's opinion, mm-hmm. uh, in the ring now? Yeah. Uh, so does he have a point there? Yeah. In an ideal world, that would be the, the case. Yeah. Listen, I would like to win the lottery right now. The winning combinations, yeah. Okay, I'd like to win the lottery this weekend. In fact, tomorrow, the Euro Millions. I'd like to do it now, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, I have to keep doing the lottery. If I'm not a gambler, I have to keep doing it in order to, 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 to win it. Yeah, in an ideal situation, of course, that will be, in their case, that will be uh, to, to, to propel and elevate uh, uh, Anthony Yardi to put him into, into, into that position. But that's not the case here. He's been told to get in the queue, like everybody does, and queue up, should you qualify to then contest for the uh, uh, prestigious uh, Lonsdale belt. Then, yeah, then by all means, we will, uh, we will defend our belt, who, no matter who it is. And that's the stance I'm taking. Remember, I didn't want this fight, not because my guy can't... There's a lot of personal reasons why I, I didn't want the fight, okay? But should they force our hands on it by getting in a position, by becoming a mandatory challenger, then, hey, we have to defend what's ours. Why didn't you want the fight? Pardon me? Why didn't you want the fight? I think I, I kind of uh, told you in the beginning of this interview that... It's personal. Me and Tunde go back right. a long way. It's a personal thing. Your relationship thing. with Tunde, sorry. I don't sorry, want yeah. to be a part of what obstructs them on their journey. Tunde namely, Tunde namely, because Tunde has probably been at the training people for about the last 20 years. He started before me. He was a part of what guided me when I first got involved as a trainer. He told me the do's and the don'ts and who's who. I was totally naive to the whole situation. Okay, I had my break with Derek Chisora, I went through. Tunde has trained numerous numerous of fighters in the past and no one has ever brought him through. He's now been blessed with Anthony Yardi who's going to hopefully take him through. Then why should I be a part of what obstructs my brother to, to, to get what he deserves, right? That is the real reason. But should he suddenly, suddenly forget the politics in boxing and then sacrifice, because it will be a sacrifice. It's, it's a big chance, a big gamble he's going to take. If he puts Anthony Yard near my guy, right, we will win that fight. It will be reminiscent of a fight we just had this weekend in America. Uh, Mikey Garcia against Adrian Broner. Stylistically, Broner, you could, you could uh, sort of compare him with Yard, that Mayweather clones. We know how to dissect that style. Exactly what Garcia did, exactly what Mardana did. It's not a foregone conclusion. In some people's opinion, yeah, Anthony looks fantastic. It, is a, it looks neat. Yes, he is. But it's not tested at certain levels. It's, it's all about levels. So if Tunde suddenly wants to cash in the only fighter <laughs> in the last 20 years who's brought him to this level prematurely, and God forbid for him, should it all go wrong for them? Who's going to pick Anthony Yardio? He, the trainer, will, yeah? Not the promoters. He, the trainer, will be the one who has to piece the fighter together. Will the fighter ever be the same again? It depends. It depends. Some never. Some fighters in the history of boxing, people like Jeff Lacey, when he came over to fight uh, Joe Calzaghe, he was the best thing since on this planet. He was destroying everybody. Karzaghi played with him. He was never the same guy again. So, you know, let's, let's, let's get real. Okay, let's get real. Forget all the hype. Forget all the... Uh, of course the public want to see it. If I wasn't involved, I'd want to see it. On paper, it looks like a really good uh, 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 matchup, which it probably is. But I'm saying, should they, I dare them to get in the position, to get in the position become a mandatory challenger and if we're still holding the British title we have no 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 reason why we should uh, vacate it we'll fight and defend what's ours we belong it belongs to us at this moment it belongs to us in an interview with Eddie Hearn recently you know he put a message out to sort of Anthony Yard and said look 
if you don't take this fight with Jose Burton, mm -hmm. that you know he suggested you know you're you're ducking him. Frank Warren said the same thing the other day regarding Anthony Yard and and his offer regarding uh, Frank Bullioni. But is it the fighters will fight whoever they need to fight? It's not it's not necessarily about anyone yeah, ducking anyone. It's not anyone, about is ducking. It? It's not about ducking. In our case, I'll defend our side in the sense that. We are the champions. Let's not forget it. We are the champions. We won that belt and we successfully defended it against Ricky Summers, who put on a really good fight against us. Yeah? We won and we're in a position to dictate. We are. In, from what I've learned from boxing now, we are in a position to dictate. You cannot be dictated to by a person who's not even in a mandatory position. So that's the stance we're taking. So um, there you have it. What could you say about the the offer that was made by Frank Warren? And in the interview again the other day, Frank Warren said that he's willing to put uh, another twenty thousand pound on I'm top sure. of the original offer. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. Listen, you could offer us. Uh, I won't say that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you could offer us whatever you want to offer us. The fact is, we've actually got a plan. Yeah, we have a plan, and that offer as big or as nice as it may be, sound, it's not a part of our plans. You know, we're not, again, we're not rushing uh, to where we want Frank to be in the next 18 months. There is a plan. Why should we dro suddenly drop our plans because to suit the other party? Why, why should we do that? Yeah, we're not going to. And sh we're going to carry on our quest. Should Yardi carry on his quest? Yeah? And then it comes such a time 12, 18 months, 24 months, where he's still winning. Boxing is a very funny game. Right? Then, yes, it, it's a no-brainer that they're going to, they're in the same weight category, the same weight uh, uh, division, and they're both English. So, therefore, that fight would inevitably happen in the future, but it's not part of our plans right now. Should Yardi, Mr. Anthony Yardi, put himself in, in, in uh, where he's mandatory? I keep repeating that. Because that, and it so happens the board have got involved and said, right, this is how it's going to be. So, hey, you know, come on, who am I to say otherwise? Something else Frank Warren said uh, at the press conference and Anthony Yard was that uh, sometime in May, um, your fighter Frank Bullioni put a tweet out mm -hmm. calling on a fight mm -hmm. with Anthony Yard. And so they're kind of going off from the back of that that he wants that fight. Can mm -hmm. you make any comment on um, a I haven't you actually seen or read because I don't really do. I'm not an internet person. I'm not a Twitter person. Um, he may very well have uh, uh, pulled out something. But something, knowing Frank Hahn, knowing know him, something would have triggered it. He's not that kind of character who just suddenly wakes up one morning and says, Oh, uh, come on, Anthony, I want to. He's not that kind of guy. Yeah, it's very reserved. Something would have triggered that tweet. I haven't read it. I've been told about it mm. numerous times, but I haven't personally read it. Uh, again, like I said, something, the Frank that I know, something would have triggered it off. And he, listen, this guy is a natural born fighter. Yeah, he's not gonna, he's not phased. So if he reacted, because that's his fighter's head talking, yeah, but he happens to have a team, like, a, like Antonio Yard has got a team around him. Uh, the fighter will always want to fight. If it was left to Frank, he will fight tomorrow. He has told me so personally. He has called me, he's aware uh, in, in, in Sardinia at the moment. Uh, he has called me, said, Don, you know what, I, I want to have this fight. I said, no, you're not going to have this fight because we have a plan, remember. So like I said, there's a team of people around him who is going to guide him guide him to stick to the program. We have a plan. So, to sum up, the current situation is that, as far as you're aware, Frank Bellioni will defend against Callum Johnson in his next fight, and Anthony Yard won't be um, fighting that eliminator against Jose that's Burton. Entirely up to them. That's up to them, but I'm that's, just saying that seems well, to be the situation. The way, right, if that's what they choose to do, I, we don't, I don't have, our team don't have any control in what they decide what they decide to do. We know exactly what we're doing. We know exactly the path we're going, okay? Whoever is our mandatory at any given time, that's the person we'll choose to fight. Okay, before I move on, Don, have you got anything else you'd like to add about this matter? I mean, it's... Uh, no, yeah. I mean, it's just something that's been, in the last three, four weeks, been uh, circulating. And uh, I've listened to everybody's uh, version or opinion. Everybody has an opinion, including myself. And it's only uh, right 
I wasn't even gonna do this. So I thought I'm gonna stay stay silent and shoot there. I dare, I use the word dare, I dare them to get themselves in a, a mandatory position. Yeah, and it's still a dare, right? I dare Anthony Yardy and his team to get themselves in, in, a, in a position to challenge for, for the belt that, that we have. Yeah, I dare them. That dare includes fighting Jose Burton. Okay. Um, yeah, just to finish off, uh, Don, obviously, uh, training today with uh, Mr. Derek Chisora. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it fair to say Derek's in a little bit of limbo land at the moment? Yeah, you could say yeah. that. You could. Again, that's. Um, I'm glad you touched on that because something is bugging me. I'm quite an intelligent man. Something is bugging me. That thing is bugging me is that it doesn't make logical sense that Mr. Dillian Body Snatcher White will not get back in the ring and finish what he started yeah that really baffles me every time I, every day I wake up from my bed I'm scratching my head he's running around the world looking for opponents right I heard I think last week I'm sure you heard the same thing that he was fighting Michael Grant last time I heard about Michael Grant he'd retired and went to Egypt living amongst the pharaohs in the pyramids they went and dug him up for Dylan White, when I read I thought, no, it's not true, but people say, yeah, it's true, he's fighting Michael Grant. And again, it was pulled because it was deemed not to be. Whoever put that, I don't know who the hell put that match together. Like I said, Michael Grant, last time I heard, he had retired in Egypt amongst the pharaohs, living in the pyramid. No disrespect to Michael Grant, I think he's a lovely man. I'm just, it's an expression I'm giving of how much he was missing from the scene then suddenly uh, they tried to resurrect him to come and fight dylan white okay dylan look no further brother you're looking for a world title you again he has not earned it he got knocked out by joshua clinically knocked out by anthony joshua he didn't win against Derek Chisora. at worst case a draw we won that fight but let me let's he, he participated it takes two they gave a great fight okay and uh, uh they favored him to win he did he knows he didn't win the fight okay now he's a very proud man didn't because i know him very very well conclude it brother get in the ring and fight derek again and make it conclusive again he said there i dare you to do that yeah the type of money that's involved also he won't get that even if he fought for a world title tomorrow he won't get that and what of the current world champions can he beat none of them so I'm not sure exactly what the logic around that particular... Again, they've got their own plans, but I'm just saying from where we're standing, yeah? It makes logical sense for him and Derek to get back in the ring and finish what they started, both of them. And... Um, Don, as we understand, Derek is currently, obviously, without uh, a promoter mm -hmm. as such, yeah. since um, parting ways with the Salmon Brothers. So, I mean, how much of a... Is that a hindrance at the moment that... Uh, there isn't sort of a promoter actively looking Listen, to... there are promoters out there. If it's only a phone call, if we wanted to uh, tomorrow, I, I'll probably, I've got a very good relationship with Frank Warren. You know, it's not, it's not a, a secret. It's only a question of getting heads together and do what's right. Um, you know, there are promoters out there. Any promoter I believe would want to work with Derek Chisora. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but option-wise for, for Derek, we're, I mean, we're assuming that he's going to fight, obviously, um, I mean, towards the back end of the year. Yeah. Uh, but option-wise, is is there many options on the table at the moment for him? Not at the moment. doesn't mean that if things change all the time. Mm. Things change all the time. He's still an active heavyweight. Yeah. He's not retired. As you can see, if, for a guy who hasn't actually got a, a, any fight on, you saw what he was doing in that. If, if, if we were offered a fight, for instance, in about... Uh, five to six weeks time there's enough he's got enough in the engine right now to get him right for, for a fight he's in the gym every day mm. every day and you know so he's still an active heavyweight who, who's still very ambitious he's won everything apart from a world title which is what's what the quest that we need me and him him as a fighter me as a coach yeah 
nothing would give me more pleasure than for him to go and lift a version of the one of those world titles yeah and again things change all the time we're gonna hang in there yeah he's still relatively young for a heavyweight we're going to hang in there he's still fresh he's still fresh okay we're still gonna hang in there opportunities come all the time and we'll you know uh, uh, him not having a promoter at this point it's almost like a, a footballer that doesn't have a team a, a very good footballer striker or you know and it's only a matter of time before somebody comes in for him so yeah. he's still he's still got his well, stock. I, like I like that analogy he, he's still, his stock is still intact based on his last fight yeah you're only as good as your last performance based on his last fight with dylan his stock is still intact so you know no no we we we're going to they can't break us man they can't break Derek. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. They're soon going to run out of people to fight and they're going to have to fight Derek. Yeah? Mr. Hayes crying out, I'm looking for an opponent. That, that's an easy fight for Derek because he's already beaten Derek once. Come on, you know, even this goes up to David Hayes as well. Come on, man. Part two. We need a part two with Dylan. We need a part two with David Hayes. David Hayes looking for a fight. Call that Derek. Yeah? There's lots of fights out there. Definitely loads of fights out there. Okay, Don, listen, thank you very much for your time today. Um, it's always a pleasure, uh, Coogan. 